but 98%. Oh. That was 100%. Yeah, you're clear, you're clear. Yeah, I am now. Whoops. So this is the diamond drill. This is what they use to drill down to the earth's surface and get a core sample. It's made of about 20 or 30 different pieces that are all highly transportable. You've got like fuel cubes down here, safety shack, baskets, core boxes, rod racks, and then everything in the tent sort of pulls apart and you have to put it back together like a jigsaw puzzle with the helicopter. It all has to go and it's all going to a pad about a mile east of here next. I don't know the names on every single piece. I haven't seen that before. Does that move with the water tub? Is that all one no. bit? I usually find out or learn about a new piece on every job. Every job I've been on, the drill's been different. This one's called a H4. There's a D2. It's like playing in a game of battleships. So before we can start sending items to the other pad, we've got to offset some things first. We've got to offset the rod rack, the water tank, the tower, so we can take off the shack and put that aside to get to some of the other stuff because the frame's in the way. So when you got tension, you just keep tension, we yeah. remove the pins here. Oh, okay, so this section comes yes. out separately. All right, I've never seen something like this before. Yeah. Do you know what the heaviest piece is on this drill? This is heavy. And the engine and the hydraulic pack are separate. They're not going to be sitting together. This is three piece. Three piece. The engine, power pack, control. So the guys that don't speak English, eh? We, we need simple words, just one word. If I want four points, you just say four points, please. One so, so, Ah, the stinger so pulls out. Then the water tank, then the manipulator last. Is it? So the rod, the casing. See, I can speak French. Need not and let fuck out. So if this is the heaviest piece, I'm quite heavy on fuel. Does the head come off? Does the, the wire line come off? Yeah. Is we, it? We take the, the head apart. Is that one, one piece? Okay, yeah. it's one piece. Yeah, one piece. These rod racks, do they fly only one at a time or do you put multiple at a time? One at a time. That's a lot of trips. Uh, this is, oh yeah, 33, 35 depends on the rod. I'll just give you the hook and you just hook me up to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a disclaimer, I'm not the best pilot. I am going to make mistakes and the internet is a brutal place to upload mistakes. But I'm going to try and be as authentic as possible with my footage and keep the editing to a limited amount. That's the uh, kind of power for the rut. When you're tight, we remove the pull and I give you the okay to lift. Yep, copy that. All right, so as I previously mentioned, we've got to offset some of the items here on this drill before we can move it to the other pad. The first thing I'm going to go for here is the rod rack. Now, it's a little bit tricky. It's sitting on top of a water tub, so I've got to hold some tension on it while Pascal, my foreman, starts to pull the pins. Now, I remember his wise words. When you get tension, just keep tension and yeah. remove the pin. Okay, you're on tension, we remove the pin. Okay. Just like any other piece of equipment, I'm trying to lift this thing straight up vertically without any drift. Unfortunately, it starts to rotate and you can see I just nick the corner of the heli shack there. The base of the rod rack is flat, so it sort of wants to sit up. And then I remembered what Pascal said again. This is a piece of shit. When you're gonna put it on the ground, it's gonna try to fall. Oh, the, the rack? Yeah. Just let it go slow, the pose on the, on the, the ground. Yeah. Touchdown. Slowly, it's gonna tilt, baby. Many breather. I hope it's in the front. The manipulator sits on top of the shack and feeds the rods into the drill. Same thing, I'm gonna go up there and see if everything is good before you go. Alright. As I lift the manipulator off the top of the shack here, I'm going pretty slow just to make sure none of the cables are hooked on anything, that it's not gonna get tangled and break something. And I'm just aiming to put it somewhere out of the way so the boys aren't gonna be tripping on it for the rest of the day. Now at the start of the video, I mentioned that I was going to keep the editing to a limited amount, but I actually had no idea how labor intensive making a video was going to be. But if I make a mistake like that, I'm still going to own it. And next up we have the stinger. This is essentially an extension of the tower, which slides in and out. And this one was jammed in there pretty hard. Okay, now we have to push it for us. Go down, go down, just hold it. 
think the plan was just to hold the weight of the stinger and then it would slide out. At this point, I'm basically just bouncing up and down the collective, trying to wriggle it out. Just, uh, we gotta slide it out. Yeah, it was pretty jammed, so that's what tools were invented for. Just hold it a second. Alright, they're gonna get the pry bar out. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming! It's about here where I start manoeuvring myself away from the drill in order to drag it out sideways. Okay. You can just go that direction, put on the ground. Once again, my inability not to drift gets the better of me this time. That's okay, that's okay. That drove by the big tree, it's gonna be perfect. We gotta remove the shack. Now, this is the piece that I dislike moving the most. It's big, heavy, and awkward. You might be able to see one side has a wooden bench that makes it heavier than the other side. So as you lift it up, it's sort of hanging low at one side. And it's not so much lifting it up that's the worst part, that's, that's fine. It's putting it back down on the new pad that's the pain in the butt. And at the other pad where this will all be going to later today, there are little slots that the corner of the shack will slide on into and very rarely does it ever work first time. There was no space big enough beside the drill to put the shack, so I've had to bring it over to my helipad. You can see those logs laying on the ground there. That's where I put my skids with my heli basket just beside it. I'm trying to put it as far forward from the pad as possible so I still have enough space to land later. And after playing pinball with all those trees, I decided that the shack had had enough abuse for one day and I was just going to leave it there. I'm just going to do a lap just to reconfigure myself. Well, uh, I don't, I don't get you. I'll be there in a second. Yeah, no problem. Alright my friend, let the fun begin. We removed the head, so put a little bit of tension. I have two safety bolts just to flip, and uh, I will uh, give you the okay to lift. Uh, sometimes I have to shake it a bit, but uh, it's gonna go uh, good. Okay, we'll try. Oh, no, you'll do. You're good to do. Okay, just hold it there like that. With Pascal standing between the load and the control pack, I was trying very hard not to squish him. So much so that I forgot what the game plan was. That's a drill, that's a drill, Darcy. That's a drill. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's why uh, uh, we're playing fat hour already over there, so it's gonna be faster when they are ready to put it on. They just hook it on, the, on their side. Copy. There are quite a few more important parts that I have to bring over to the drill before I can put this head back on. So for now, it's just going to lay there on the ground until I'm ready. Now that's out of the way, Patrick here is going to hook me up to a four point to send back to Pascal. I don't know if you would have noticed, but the four pointers are what we use to attach the load to the hook itself. So now next two loads is going to be the, the heater with the tools in there for it, for the guys. Second one, the tanker just beside it. Copy that, the heater first and then the tanker beside it. This piece I'm picking up here isn't just a heater, it's a heater slash generator combo. At the moment it's only used as a generator but when it starts to get a little bit cooler overnight they'll be using it as a heater just to keep warm.
Yeah. If you could try to not go uh, too too fast, it's on the tar pan on the side. Okay. The walls of this generator shack are just pieces of tar. And if you fly too fast, well, the wind's just going to rip it apart, isn't it? When I have a load that's spinning like this one is, I usually try and tap it on the ground first just to stop that before maneuvering it into the place where it needs to go. So all these pieces of equipment that I'm bringing into the new pad are going to be from the exact same position that they were in the old pad. So here I've got the generator shack sitting on these logs. Then I'm going to have the red diesel tanks going south of that. If I pick up something from the northeast corner, it's going to go down on the northeast corner at the new pad in relation to the floor there. The four red tanks that you see down the bottom there are all diesel. The whole drill just runs off diesel. And these tanks, a lot like the other pieces, utilizes the four point attachment. And at this point of the day, the winds have finally started to swing and it makes getting into the pad a little bit awkward. Since the winter swung, I've sort of got to come into this thing crosswind as I line it up and start slowing her up. Start putting in some pedal. Grab it sideways. And eventually I'll end up flying sort of backwards. Next load, uh, the section of floor, the platform. The floor is not a fun load to fly. In fact, anything that has a flat surface is not a fun load to fly. Pretty much any load that has a flat surface will have an aerodynamic capability. And if it's a light load, it might just be uncontrollable. This is uh, every pilot's favorite load. I disagree. Flying like shit, you got to I gotta go with flow. The way this load flew, it was like an anchor that dragged me into the ground if I flew any faster than 20 knots. So it was a pretty slow journey and I was on my toes the whole time. Once again, once the boys are done with those four pointers, they've got to keep sending them back to Pascal so we can keep sending more loads. Next load is uh, the water tub, because they have the tools in there. They're going to put it somewhere around on the ground. Okay. As I start to lift when we're using these four pointers, the boys have to make sure that they are all sitting correctly. The well, longest part about lifting all these pieces seems to be the four pointers so the corner points get uh, hooked up on something or twisted. Not too heavy, 80%. I'm just going to put this water cube on the ground for now. And when the boys are ready later on, we'll bump it up onto the floor. So, Tia, how's your fuel? I've still got uh, 40 more minutes. Uh, 25 for us and uh, 15 to go back. Uh, I only need five minutes to get back. I have to be strategic about what pieces I lift during what particular part of my fuel cycle that I'm in. Some of these pieces weigh over a metric ton, or 2,200 pounds for the American viewers. So while I'm waiting to burn off some fuel, I'll just take the light loads first. What a beautiful day to move a drill. I'm pretty sure these drills have OCD because they want every load to be straight and square in relation to all the other loads. Next up, I'm going to start sending the baskets filled with random and assorted items. These baskets can be a bit of a mixed bag of lollies. You never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes they can be filled with pails of grease and oil and they can be heavy. Sometimes they're just filled with rubbish and super light. Now, this is where speaking French could have come in handy. I thought it was meant to go on the logs, 
So that's where I was aiming. But he kept grabbing it and dragging it to the side and I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Grab it, swing it, mate. But he was actually just trying to drag it to the side because we we're going to put something else on the logs, not the baskets. Sorry, I thought you wanted it on the logs. My bad. Baskets again, but two at a time. All right, two baskets at a time. Now, flying two loads simultaneously together can generally be uncomfortable. But these baskets are the same shape, the same size, the four pointers are the same length, so it'll fly as if it was just one load. As I start to lift it up, they're going to come crashing together. Yeah, it wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. 98%. Oops. That was 100%. Yeah, you're clear, you're clear. Yeah, I am now. Whoops. And that's what happens when you run out of power. Alright, uh, this thing's so heavy, it might just suck me out of the sky, so I've got to sort of just guide it where it's going to fall. If I just sit at 100%, I'm going to get some say in the matter. Oh no, that was alright. You think you're good for that AV part, that uh, section of tower? Yeah, should be by now. So I've been planning my entire morning around picking up this piece when I'm lighter on fuel, but I'm pretty sure the basket was heavier. Alright, we're lifting the tower here. Come on. As you can see here, when I start to lift it, it's going to swing the wrong direction. Bangs into the motor. I just wait a second and like a pendulum, it swings back in the other direction. Oh, that's heavy. 95%. That was a pretty dusty lift on my behalf. Just like with the drill head and the water tub, they're not ready to put the tower where they need to use. Alright, so I want this tower right on the floor. I'll just walk it in, hand it to them, and they'll put it right where they want it. With some of these jobs, you don't even need to be that precise on the long line. You just need to sort of get it close enough and the drillers will grab it and move it where they want to. They actually have a lot of control down there, but obviously the heavier the item, the harder it is to move. So RC, you feel you're okay for the motor? Uh, if you've got something lighter, I'd appreciate it. After hitting 100% with the baskets and 95% with the tower, I still had 20 minutes of fuel left before I needed to go get some. So I thought it was unnecessary to just go back to back with all these heavy bits. I can wait till later. Alright, look at the wire line here. The wire line is essentially the base of the drill. The tower sits on top of that. So once we get the wire line in place at the other pad, then we can bump the tower back on top of it. And after the tower, it'll be the drill head. And we're up and away at 90%. And just as I was getting in the groove of things, it was at this point in the day that the batteries in my GoPro died. So unlike a drill move, GoPro batteries don't last four hours. So you really only got to see about half of the jigsaw puzzle that I had to put together. It was probably one of the trickiest drills I've ever flown. There's a lot of pieces there that I had no idea where they went. That manipulator just sat on the roof. Yeah, I, I didn't know where it needed to go exactly. It was sort of tricky. The rod rack was hard to get in and they had to put pins through it while I held the weight on it. This one was tricky. I just realized it's got these little slots. Why? So you get it close enough and it'll sort of slide on in. So what the f with the shaft? Why is the is all twisted. Ah, oh, no structure. Yes, This side BN. This side no BN. Now after everything's moved over to the new pad and the drill's plugged in and spinning, I bring the geologists out to line up the drill. Here the drill was out by a couple of degrees, so they start winching it over. And if you've made it this far, honestly, thank you for watching.